in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I wrote here that when demons fortify a mindset and use it as their gateway into a person's life the mindset becomes a stronghold are you getting that now i'll take it again i'm reading it because i want you to write it down when demons fortify a mindset an ideology a thinking pattern and use it as their gateway into a person's life that mindset is called a stronghold that means a stronghold is a mindset that has been crystallized by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the person consistently thinks that way one of the things i've learned about mindsets is that mindsets are gates and doors in the spirit realm absolutely gates and doors that can authorize the entrance of the word of god of god and, uh, and the things of the kingdom or authorize the operations of demons in people's lives please follow me very carefully because god wants to set us free when demons fortify a mindset and they use it as their gateway into a person's life that mindset becomes a stronghold See, the Bible tells us not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. The word devices, there's the word stratomai. That means his strategy. The strength of Satan is not in an ability he has in himself. The strength of Satan is the advantage of spiritual knowledge that he knows. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's not like Satan is powerful as a person. His power is based on the advantage that he was the custodian. Of the revelations of the kingdom and although he was thrown down he still has that knowledge so there are too many pathways that he can navigate in the spirit to get to a man's life that's what becomes the strength of satan are you following what i'm saying now so satan is very is very smart because he he has knowledge of different pathways to access a believer's life and if we do not know how to shut these doors against him, our Christian experience may be barren and we may never truly fulfill destiny. Are we getting blessed? Strongholds. Mindsets. I wrote a few thoughts about mindsets and let's write them down. Mindsets are gates, I've said that, and doorways in the spirit. They permit the operation of the Holy Spirit or the, the operation of demons mindsets there are gates and there are doors in the spirit realm that means when satan freely accesses a man's life there is a stronghold that authorizes his operation in that person's life hallelujah when the holy spirit seems to find expression in a person's life among other things there is also a stronghold a mindset that permits his operation number two a man's life is directly or the quality the quality of a man's life is directly tied to his mindset absolutely true proverbs 23 verse 7 it says as a man thinketh in his heart he equates your life to your thought pattern your mindset the quality of a man's life the quality of my life and your life spiritually financially 
and otherwise the quality of my life is highly dependent on my mindset the bible here says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he as a man thinketh that means that your life revolves around your ideologies please are we learning something tonight that means god can never change your life until he does something about your mindset your life is the child that your mindset is birthing or has birthed and it will continue to birth rubbish according to what is inside until there is a change another thing i said about mindsets is that mindsets define our limits and possibilities in life mindsets define our limits and our possibilities in life Shiba Kato Luke chapter 6 verse 45 Luke chapter 6 verse 45 Mindsets define our limits That means your limitation in life Is according to your mindset And your possibilities in life Are also according to your mindset That's the reason why you can have two people Same people But there are possibilities That one may be able to do and the other one may not be able to step in. The Bible says, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth what? That which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hallelujah. We talk a lot about words and the creative power of spoken words. But words don't just evolve themselves like that. They are products of ideologies. Men speak according to their perceptions about God, about life, about themselves, about their destinies. Hallelujah. Another thing I want you to know about mindsets is that a man's mindset can limit God in his life. Very serious issue. As mighty as God is, as great as God is, a man's mindset can limit the operation of God in his life. Psalm 78, verse 41. Let's look at something very interesting there. The psalmist was writing about the nation of Israel with Moses. Psalm 78, verse 41. Shiba katabana. Is God speaking to anybody? He says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God. And they did what? They limited the Holy One. A man can limit God in his life. A man can make God look small in his life. How did they limit God? Let's go to verse 19 and 20. Verse 19 and 20 tells us how they limited God. Still the same Psalm 78. Please let's hurry up. I have a lot to talk about and then I want us to pray. There is so much that God wants to do in our lives. Let's read verse 19. Want to read. Yea, they speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? So while they were in the wilderness... They said, does God have that? Yes, I know God is mighty. But based on what I know about him, is he that mighty to make a table in the wilderness? Verse 20. Behold, he smote the rock. I've seen that one. I know he did it. And the waters gushed out. And the streams overflowed. But can he give bread also? Yes, I know that he did this. He healed cancer. But can he really heal HIV? Can he provide meat or flesh for the people? Okay, I understand the logic between water and rock. Maybe some scientific things happen and he just took advantage of science. Amazing. The Bible says they limited God. That means God wanted to do many things. He wanted to show his outstretched arm over the nation of Israel. But their mindsets limited him. There are many of us here in this place that if only we could 
align it will be amazing how far god can stretch his hand upon our lives and do wonders in and through our lives but that one limitation mindsets and over time that ideology has become prolonged when demons came they saw that this mindset is the exact doorway that they need to your life and they fortified it you know what it means to fortify it that means to build a fence around it to make sure that this becomes your thinking pattern no matter what happens are you getting what i'm saying when a man is suffering from a stronghold even when you hear the word of god you bring that word and subject it to your mindset and the activities of these spirits make you to resist the possibility that the word of god offers how are mindsets formed how do we get these mindsets number one culture culture I think it was the school of ministry students or the final year people were talking and then we, we talked on this too. Culture. There are ideologies that we have adopted because of where we are coming from. Our cultural values. Right? And it's not every part of culture that is wrong. But there are certain aspects of culture that are occultic. They are wrong. They are demonic. And we, you know, we grew up knowing it to be the norm. And we have adopted it. When we gave our lives to Christ, we didn't divorce from it. We incorporated it as part of our Christian experience. And so, although we are born again, those mindsets still remain doorways. Is God speaking to anyone tonight? Culture. The influence of culture. We have all kinds of tribes in Nigeria with their history. Is that true? We have people from down south, west, middle belt, north, and all of that. We have people from the extreme north. We have the Yorubas, the Igbos, south, south, Hausa people, middle belters. And all of us have all kinds of history about our culture. Is that true? And can I tell you the truth? The way you are looking at me right now, many of you, you love God, you are born again, but the devil can sing choruses in and out of your life without restraint because there is a part of culture that some of us have refused to let go. There are, it's amazing, as young as we are, there are some of us that your, your, your love and affinity towards culture is very disturbing. As young as you are, when it comes to culture, you behave as if you are 70 years old. It must be done culturally. As young as you are, and you wonder, my goodness, what happened to this person? Hallelujah. Cultural influences. They have defined our perception about God. They have defined our perception about marriage. Is that true? They have defined our perception about ministry. There are all kinds of men of God doing ministry in Nigeria. And when you look at the ministry, you see culture following the ministry too. There are aspects of culture that will never leave because we have allowed it. And for many of us, now there are very positive aspects of culture. Morality, respect, and so on and so forth. But I'm telling you, there are, culture was designed largely to accommodate the operation of demons and spirits. Are you aware of that? And many of us are given that template. And the devil's strategy is this. He says, become a Christian. You can become a Christian. I'm not stopping you. But I want you to go together with that. Take two of them. So you can be praying in tongues while I enter and wreak havoc in your life. Hallelujah. So it is possible to find a Christian right now. The moment there is stomach pain, he just remembers that there's there's one special kind of of concoction now i'm not just talking about um your ability to discern trees that heal that one you know that there are things that you add to it so the the man of god is born again but under certain situations huh when you find out that they are not giving you the job after service you just call somebody and say is, is there nothing we can do about it what they are saying is ah 
Let's go to the other way. Culture. Everybody say culture. Till today, there are many, for instance, many tribes and many territories across Nigeria that part of the rights that lead to marriage are largely occultic and devilish. Are you getting me? In fact, others, they do certain direct devilish things. You know it. You know that this is invoking a spirit to come and guide you. Someone once told me about, I won't mention where the person is from, but then they told me that there is a spirit that they invoke when they are about to get married and he goes with the family. You understand? To make sure that they are protected. And this is how our forefathers, many of our, let me tell you, as you are laughing, I hope you know that every single tribe, tongue, nation, and territory in this country has contributed our share of permitting demons because of our culture. I schooled at a particular place. Um, careful. I schooled at a particular place in, in Plateau State and um, they had masquerades. Praise God. Can you still hear me? Are you with me? They had masquerades. And it was said that one of the masquerades, that the guy had authority to command bees. Bees. So, if you did something wrong and they go and invoke the power of those masquerades, you will just be walking on the street and all of a sudden, you will find out that untold amounts of bees will just come and invade you and, and the sting, you know that the sting is not just a normal sting of bees because it's occultic. Everybody say culture. There are some of us, for instance, before your parents release you to come to school or do anything, they tell you there is a particular right or cultural right that you must be engaging. Am I being sincere tonight? Hallelujah. And now, for some of us, or many of us, in innocence, we have opened up ourselves and allowed these things to shape our mindsets. I know many cultures where when they give birth to children, they take the children to all kinds of places and they have some, some kind of fraternity with demonic spirits to protect and, and, and guide the children. And the demons will seemingly protect the children, but then it is at the expense of the destiny of that child. Everyone say culture. Number two. Mindsets are formed as a result of past experiences. You can put on your phone to just help you as you write. Past experiences, whether good or bad, your experiences in life, it has a way of um, creating a mindset in you. I'll give you an instance. A lady who was probably abused growing up. Hallelujah. Maybe molested by a pastor or her relative or somebody. May grow up having a mindset that all men are devils. All men are destructive whether they are born again or not. In fact, there are still some of you sitting down right now. Probably... You had three or four or five or more relationships. And maybe most of those relationships are with believers. But then at the end of it, you've had one disappointment or the other. And on the strength of those experiences, you have been able to draw what you call a logical conclusion. That all men are wicked. It's just that some are more wicked than others. All are wicked. You see that? So, when God wants to do great things in your life, something comes to limit you. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Number three. Your mindset is formed by your level of exposure. 
level of exposure. Thank you. I think I'm good. I'm okay. Your level of exposure. That means, now not to insult you, but if you grew up in the village, entirely in the village, you've not had any kind of uh, exposure, you grew up in the village, there are certain possibilities that exist in the village. Right? And you may not know that life can be lived at a higher level. Is that true? So you may be old, but the truth is that there is an ideology that you take along. Your level of exposure. There are people, for instance, who growing up, they never serve them food in their own plate. You know this kind of communal... These families with many children, especially polygamous families, they now say food is ready. Food is ready means secure your spot. Just find somewhere and sit down. Because whatever is a big, big plate, and wherever you can, if you, if you are strategic enough, good for you for that night. If you are late, bad for you for that night. I follow me now. So, when those kinds of people are growing, it affects their concept of kindness. It affects their concept of generosity. Are you getting me? When you see someone carry a hamper, a Christmas hamper to bless somebody, say, ah, this is too much. Ah, I mean, how can you lavish everything just on one person? Because all through growing up, you shared everything plus your clothes. There was nothing you ever had that you were blessed with and you said, this is my own. Mindsets. Hallelujah. There are families, for instance, where father, mother, children all slept in the same room. Correct? Once it's night, everybody secures a very strategic area. Those who put two chairs together, those who put mats outside, huh? those who squeeze and do all kinds of things, mindsets. And so it affects you. Now, while you're laughing, I hope that you are, you are seeing how that mindsets are formed. Your level of exposure. And now, the danger is that if you, you are bankrupt in terms of exposure, if you are not careful when God now begins to expose you, huh, you will push yourself into some unnecessary exposure that will be swinging to the other side of the pendulum. Have you seen people like that? People who you never... You never would have been able to afford a shoe of 1,000. Now you are in a relationship with somebody and he bought you a shoe of 20,000 and said, no, my standard is more than this. You see the other side of the mindset. All your life you use shoe of 1,500, highest. Now you have a shoe of 20, you say, no, 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 no. I suffered growing up. I must make up for this thing. Mindsets. Is God speaking to us? Number four, your association. Mindsets are formed um, based on your association. If you've lived your entire life having wicked people, heartless people, bad brothers who bullied you, beat you up, you went to school, you had seniors who beat you up, bullied you, it creates a sense of complex and inferiority and many things happen to you. Associations. There are many people who became Christians easily because while they were growing up, they were surrounded by genuine people. Look at our little baby now, um, Faith. Our little baby in Koinonia. Imagine how this lady will begin to think I was having a fixed class with the school of ministry students and then while we were praying praise god while we were praying i watched the little girl she was praying in tongues and just moving when they lift their hands she will lift her hands mindset because of our association that lady at age five or six will think like somebody at age eight because she has been relating with adults that's how some of you you are 17 but your mind is is 41 because all through, you never had a mate. All your mates, you did have mates. Your, the, your friends were ten times older than you. 
So you joke their joke at their level. So now that you are with your friends, when you talk, they say, ah, bros, how old are you? Minds, have you seen people like that? Even the way they walk, you see the person walking and you're like, my brother, it's all well. You say, I'm like that, oh, please. Mindsets. There are people when they crack jokes, they crack ancient proverbs. They can't crack anything, anything modern and contemporary. Where other people are saying, you know, if wishes were horses, the guy would just come with one kind of thing. Say, so when a, this and that happens, and you are looking at it and say, my brother, the last time I read this was in one tribal dictionary. Where did you get it? That's all he's known all his life. Everyone say mindset. Your association. You grew up with your grandfather. You grew up with your grandmother. Their possibilities were your possibilities. Their jokes were your joke. You ate what they ate. Now they ask you what's your best food. You mention something nobody knows. Because all through, that, that's what you have been exposed to. Now follow me please. God is taking us somewhere this night. Number five, your family background. Sadly, if you grew up from a poor family, there is something it must have done to you. Must have done to you. No matter how godly or otherwise you are. If you grew up from a very wealthy family, if you grew up from a Christian family, there are some of us that grew up in polygamous families that are mixed. Is that true? Some were believers, some were non-believers. There are some of us that grew up in all kinds of family settings. And these things have created an impression in us. For instance, if you grew up in a polygamous family, based on what you saw growing up, you knew that your mother's side and your stepmother's side, everybody protected their own interests. Is that true? Now you come to ABU and your friends are saying, let's feel free. Say, no, I don't feel free. I, I protect and I guard my thing. And they're saying, no, we're innocent people. They fetch water for you, you refuse to use it to bath. And they say, uh uh, we're all koinonia. I say, koinonia, wickedness is real. You see, a mindset. You came back and you saw that your roommate fetched your food. You say, God forbid, I will eat again. Because that's what happened probably between your stepmom and your mom. So you just felt that, uh uh, the moment you are sick, you are suspecting all your roommates. Who is doing this? Somebody in this room, a man's enemies are the people. In your mind, you are talking about your own house. Mindset. To an extent that even when you say God has blessed you with something and they say we rejoice with you, you get angry. Because you are used to it. When they said they rejoice with your mother, that thing scattered. So now they say they rejoice with you. You say you rejoice. I'm saying I'm marrying. I'm getting married. And you say you are rejoicing with me. See, mindset. We have had unnecessary enemies because of our mindsets. Family background can influence mindsets. Let's look at one more. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your failure and your limitations in life can build a mindset in you. Failure and limitations in life. You probably wrote jam 10 times before you got admission. Praise God. Or some kinds of things. Maybe you had to write Wayek many times. Or when you were in primary school, you had to repeat. Or secondary school. All these things are mind builders. They create mindsets in us. Now, the danger is this. Please look up. The danger is this. That mindset creates your picture about what you perceive life to be. Are you getting me? The mindsets that you have, they are like, they are like paint brushes. So, they can paint to you a picture of what the world looks like. A picture of what friendship looks like. In fact, a picture of what God looks like. You probably trusted God for something. Trusted God as a family. Nothing happened. And the worst of all happened. And then another one happened. Maybe a tragic event. And then another one happened. 
And then another one happened. Have you seen parents that when you say God is faithful, they just say, God? What are you talking about? God? Which God? Where was God when they were driving me out of my house? Where was God when maybe my wife or husband was dying? Have you heard people like that? Where was God when my child was dying of cancer? So because of their failures and their limitations, it has created a mindset about God. So when you sing all these songs about the faithfulness of God, and you read scriptures like, since I was um, young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. That man will say the psalmist lied. Because there is nothing in his life to verify that that is true. Hallelujah. And so you now compose a song with that scripture. And the person calls you a liar. Because he says, God, there, there are people today that believe in anything that works. Whether it's God, an idol, because they believe that, look, oh, if you depend on God alone, you will fail. So add whatever works. And that was the whole concept of the Egyptian, Egyptian religion. They had many gods because they believed that gods were limited. So one had a unique grace for, first, for fertility. Another one had grace for um, um, protection. Another one had grace for wisdom and oratory. So they believed that when you serve all of those gods, you will have the complete picture of a good life. Now look at me. Did you realize that your understanding about life today, your understanding about God, and your level of impact and breakthrough in life has largely been limited by your mindset. And for some of us, it's no longer a mindset. It has become a stronghold. Why has it become a stronghold? Because demons saw that mindset. And they saw that this is the exact kind of mindset that permits their operation in an area of your life. So they came and fortified that mindset to make sure that you do not even realize there is a problem with it. Hallelujah. So every time God wants to do great things in your life, those strongholds limit him. God wants to make you prosperous. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to heal and bless you. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to take you from glory to glory. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to give you a good husband, a good wife, a good job. God wants you to excel and break limits. But those mindsets limit him. There are many people who may never enjoy a good home. Because there are poisonous strongholds that they have about, about fatherhood, motherhood, parenting, and so on and so forth. There are some of us right now, we don't have any friend in our lives. The truth is there are no friends. All the friends that we have are just our regular church people who just, just because of our connection. But we don't have destiny friends. And the reason is our mindset. There are some of us, you fight with everybody you come across with. Once you are friends with the person, after two weeks, you are already fighting. Something about your mindset keeps telling you that everybody hates you. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have settled down and we have believed that we will never amount to anything in life. Why? Why? Because family background, culture, everyone in your family was a failure. The richest man in your family was a carpenter. And he probably had a bike. That's it. So it's a mindset. Out of the 20 or 30 people in your extended family, nobody has risen past secondary school. A mindset. And you have accepted it. So even when you push through to, to get a degree, you say, even if I don't get a job, I've tried. After all, I'm better than these ones that stop there. Whereas God wants to take you to the nations. Everyone shout, change my mindset, oh Lord. Mindset. 
Shout it one more time. Change my mindset, oh Lord. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest deliverance that can happen to a man is not just that demons are casted out, but that, that there is a change, a reconfiguration of your mindset such that you authorize heaven to now begin to carry out only the things that are consistent with the word of God in your, in your life. I look at people, I've had the privilege of traveling to many places in this country. And when I travel, I like studying the culture and the ideology of the people. And oftentimes when we travel, if we are spending more than a day or two, they usually take us on a tour around the major areas of the city. They show us different things and all of that. And I have been amazed. I have been shocked and sometimes surprised at the ideologies that can be across a territory. Let me give you one. Um, in 2007, when I was in Port Harcourt, when I got there for the first two or three weeks, I was laughing every day. And the reason was because I have never seen that a man can be angry and slap your car. Are you getting that now? I mean, you push somebody and he's angry and then he slaps your car. Pam! The metal. Oh. And to him, he believes that that slap is supposed to have gotten to you. I said, my goodness. You slap a metal, your hand is paining you, the person in front does not realize and is supposed to be a communication of your pain. Say mindset. Number two, Lagos. I have always wondered how a man will rush and hurry his life like that. I mean, you hurry your life almost enjoying yourself. You are trying to drop, trying to climb. And in the midst of the car, there's someone preaching. Praise the Lord. Oh, single, single. And somebody's dropping. And they're hurrying up. And I'm wondering, my goodness, a combination of spirituality and foolishness coexisting? Mindsets. Hallelujah. I went to a particular region in this country and I found out that it was the women that were on bike. As in bike, as in bike machine. My goodness. Yes, the ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies on bike. And I said, where are the men? How can a man buy bike and give his wife and say, you know, go and farm or do whatever with it. Mindsets. Could it be that there are certain things that God has wanted to achieve in your life this year, 2014, but up till now, your mindset has refused to give him entrance? Can I tell you something? Before we blame Satan over everything, I'm telling you now that Satan is not so powerful. The strength of Satan is the ability to build strongholds around your mindset. Is God blessing us? That's why you find out that there are people. Have you seen people you pray over their situation and nothing happens? Because the truth is their mindset opposes that prayer. The Bible says that we can pull down these strongholds. We can pull down these strongholds. There are many people who demons have been casted out of them. Yet, their situations did not change. See that? It's not all about demons. There are strongholds that are resident within our minds. And tonight, God will grant us grace to deal with it. How do you pull down these strongholds? Let's look at it quickly. How do you pull down these strongholds? Seeing that they are destructive. 
Man of God, could it be that there is more God can do with your life and ministry? But your mindset, your mindset. I was teaching the school of ministry and I told them, the ministry students, I told them, I said, think world class. Think world class. You can start from Jerusalem, but don't die in Jerusalem. Jesus, listen, listen. They said this about Jesus. Nathaniel said in John chapter 1, he said, can anything good come out of where? Let me, let me talk to you a bit before we talk about how to pull down strongholds. Let me tell you how familiar spirits operate. You know, have you heard about familiar spirits? Do you know how they operate? Let me tell you. A familiar spirit, right, is, is a spirit or there are groups of spirits that have dwelt across a region for a very long time. They have studied the vulnerabilities of the people and built strongholds from their vulnerability. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have, they have over hundreds and probably thousands of years dwelt in a region that's why they are called familiar they understand everything about the lineage they understand everything about that territory and they have been able to study patterns and they have found the best pattern that they can create a door out of that's the reason why you find out that many territories have certain limitations is that true there are tribes that their own their own um unbecoming is immorality is that true there are tribes that their own is hatred. There are tribes that their own is anger. There are tribes that the men are careless. Is that true? Generally careless. Born again or not born again. The men are just careless. There are tribes and territories where in almost any, every family, you must find one or two daughters that um, may have a child before marriage. Is that true? There are other families that you, out of 10 people, you may find only one that can sustain their marriage. Familiar spirits. They build strongholds across the vulnerabilities of territories and they use it as their entrance. So, the man of God may be in ministry, but he has not dealt with these areas and he thinks it does not matter. And he finds out that although he's in ministry, that anger that surrounded his territory is still affecting him in ministry and there are many doors God will send partner to the ministries he will drive them out because of anger are you seeing that now how do you pull down these strongholds number one you must first recognize and admit the need to take on a renewed godly mindset you will never never receive the help of god if you do not recognize and admit that you need help there are many arrogant people with messed up mindsets who will never accept that something is wrong with their ideologies the first step to your deliverance hear me brothers and sisters it's not that hands are laid on you is that you come to a point where you think about your life and look at me in the next one minute i like everybody under the sound of my voice think about your life is this the best if you don't come to a point where you think about your life you may die in that level forever think about your life why am i behaving the way i always behave why have i attracted all kinds of woes into my life is this the best of my destiny why is it that every man that comes into my life in two weeks, he will go away? Leave the issue of demons. They gave you a job. After two weeks, you fought with your superiors. They drove you. You went to another place. After two weeks, you fought with your superiors. The third one, the day they gave you the job, you slapped your boss. They said this way, out, never come back again. Something is wrong. Some of us, our mindsets have driven all our destiny helpers. All. There are some of us, our mindset about money has kept us poor and will keep us poor forever. God will bless you with 10,000 naira. You carry all of that 10,000 naira. No tithing, no giving. You carry it and go and eat in a restaurant. You call your friends. Let's come and enjoy ourselves. Mindset. 
because you think your respect and honor is based on the money you have and that's what you got probably from culture are you getting my point now so you think that you will be well respected and you go out of your way make money only to carry it and spend it your concept of making money is to have something to spend because the more you spend the more you are respected mindset so you see a man who is working and earning 250,000 but you will go to the village for Christmas or New Year at the end of the year and blow 3 million naira trying to impress people and come back broke and sell one of his car only to begin the hard work again. After 40 years of working, he has not been able to do anything and live for his children. Everybody say mindset. There are some of us, we have mindsets and we believe through those mindsets that we can never do anything on our own. And that's the basis for your doing malpractice. You are born again. You are every, even this exam now. Some of you it has started. Some of you to start. There is a, a predetermination already. Malpractice, I must do it. It's just that it will not be as great as the last one. At least I'll be here, but I must do it. For some of you, I will look for chokes, but if they bring it, I will refuse. Mindsets. Have you not heard of parents organizing waek, huh? waek and jam and flogging their children for not receiving the chokes? Mindset. Because they think that no matter what will happen, let the child just move forward. Their ego is at stake. And they don't care whether the child is understanding or he's moving legitimately or not. When we come into the kingdom, one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit is begin to expose us to a point where we realize that the mindsets we have at the moment is not sufficient to take us to the place where God wants to take us. How many of you can admit tonight that I, I want to take responsibility? Some of you, you have been blaming everybody from your father to your mother. You are blaming everybody. You are now blaming your friend. You are now blaming everybody. You will take that bad attitude and blame your husband and your wife. When children come, it will now be children. How many of us tonight can say, I take responsibility. My mindset needs upgrading. There's no denying it. See, let me tell you, when you come before God, you must be like a child. You must allow yourself. It's not your fault. Some of us, that's the reality you lived with all your life. Now God is challenging you. There are two groups of people in this place tonight. Those who will argue it and throw away what I'm saying and allow the devil to keep fortifying that mindset. And after 20, 30, 40 years, you'll find out that nothing has moved. I found out that time does not change things. New decisions bring new changes in life. For 38 years, a man was lying down at a pool called Bethesda. But in less than five minutes, when he did something differently from a renewed mindset, you know his problem, anger and bitterness. Jesus said, what will I do for you? He said, no, every time I want to do this, all these people. And Jesus said, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. You have refused to move forward because you think your friend married the man who will be your husband. Ten years, they've given birth to five children. You are still there angry. They cannot even remember the events that happened. Say in this life, there are some people even in heaven, blah, 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 keep talking. They are moving. You are there dying. The devil has crystallized a mindset of hatred. There are some of us that hate our parents. It's true that they treated you bad. But you know that you must honor your parents for your days to be long. And now God is telling you, let go so that you can take on something new. Me, God forbid. Mindsets. God wants to take us to new levels. Brothers and sisters, there is no telling how far God is going to take you. Look at Joseph. Joseph had a dream, a great dream, to be a great man in life and destiny. He shared the dream with his brothers. And he paid dearly for it. After many years, he now became the prime minister in Egypt. 
and his brothers came. He would have been angry to hold on to that resentment. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit who can bear. There are some of us right now, God is speaking to you. There is a lot of forgiveness for you to do if you must rise up. You are angry with everybody. Now you, are, you have joined the group. You, you are now angry with yourself. Everybody you are angry with has moved forward. Only you. Now you are angry with yourself for being angry with everybody. I, I don't even like life. Let me even die. You see, that's the point. But tonight you are hearing the word of the Lord. It's time to lay that mindset down. Some of us, you've been carrying your village on your head. And it has been punishing you for decades. It's now time to drop that thing and say it's true. I am from so 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 place but I'm an ambassador of the kingdom. I need to change. Many of us have mindsets about money. Mindsets about marriage. Mindsets about God. Mindsets about everything. Some of us because of our mindsets you don't apologize. Because your mindset interprets apology as being cheap. So when you need to say, I'm sorry, you say, over my dead body. I'm sorry would have saved many people. Money, time, opportunities have been lost. Say, the way I am, I don't tell anybody I'm sorry. I don't look for anybody's thing. I don't care. And God is saying, apologize. Say, for what? Mindset. Who knows? Maybe there are still some people here. You come for koinonia, but you don't talk to one another. I can't apologize. There are some of us, mindsets have brought self-centeredness. Let everyone go to hell for as long as I'm doing well. It must benefit me first. When I'm satisfied, I now turn and I say, who is there? I had to change a lot of things. Oh my goodness. I had terrible mindsets. When I started working with God, I had gotten some of these mindsets from my upbringing. I got these mindsets from my failures of the past. I got these mindsets, but I knew that where God was taking me to. See, you cannot give God your terms for greatness. You must subscribe to his terms. Many of us want to be great, but you want to be great at your terms. You say, Lord, these are my conditions. If you can bend to my little mold, that's your cup of tea. And God says, I am God. Do you know that something that has never been done in your family, you can be the first? But the question is, are you like the nation of Israel that has limited God? Sister, who told you God cannot use women? Who told you there cannot be women billionaires in your family? Everyone has suffered. You are planning to go and join them. I know one of our ladies in this place. They have a mindset in their family. She comes from a background where if you go to secondary school, just from a little, they just drag you and say, go and marry. You know there are backgrounds like that. They say you have tried. JS3 or SS1, that's good enough. Go and marry. And I know the lady and I've, I've honored her resilience. This lady has gone through all kinds of pressure from family that she should go and marry. And the lady said, I want to go to the university. There's much that God wants to do. They made arrangement of one man for her. And they were trying to cajole her to go home so that you pin her down. They'll marry and she refused. Let me tell you, breaking out of a mindset is difficult. You will be misunderstood. Because you are breaking status quo. Some of you, when you want to do something, your parents say every end of the year, there is something we bow to. And you say, Daddy, I love you and I respect everyone, but I'm tired. I'm now a child of God. Your father will say, how old do you think you are? I bow to this thing to pay your school fees. Why didn't you reject the school fees? I bow to this thing to buy the Bible that you are using. You better go and bow. But who tonight will be able to say, Lord, I recognize a need for a change of mindset. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. If you break that barrier 
between you and your destiny you will fly on the wings of eagles i don't care how bad things are right now it doesn't take time it only takes you cooperating with the lord say lord in my village nobody has done this in my family nobody has done this but right now i make up my mind to partner with the holy spirit you may be one in a million but you must be the first to stand up and arise and say i'm going to break this status quo this status quo of witchcraft everybody in your family has died at 30 you will need to change your mindset and say no way no way My father's elder brother died at a particular age. My father's younger brother died at a particular age. When he was getting to that point, thank God that we had had some spiritual knowledge and we prayed and we labored in the spirit. My father would have died in a miserable way. How to pull down strongholds. Number one, you must recognize and admit that you need a renewed godly mindset. You must. Every man that saw the mercy of God in his life had to come to a place where he broke down and humbled himself. God does not help arrogant people. If there is one thing that God does is to oppose the there are many of us probably for the first time in your life today will be your the first time your pride will be broken to say lord finally finally i get down on my knees and i accept that my wrong mindset is the reason why i'm poor and broke my wrong mindset may be the reason why i am not married my wrong mindset is the reason why my ministry may not be growing my wrong mindset may be the reason see if you break down let it sting your ego and let it go and let god step into your life you will never i'm telling you this you will never get the attention of god with the arrogant nature that many of us have god if you are available please come down i think uh, i may need you one or two areas god is not like that if my people who are called by my name the first thing that happens is they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn repent turn from their wicked ways he said then not before not during then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their lives the hand of the lord is not too short over our destinies Many of us need to get to that point of humility tonight. I know you are a great evangelist, bishop, pastor, but tonight break down your pride and say, Lord, I ask for mercy. There is something up here that is permitting the devil to wreck my life. I had to come to a point in my life where I said, Lord, don't let me be a fool forever. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. All the mindsets that authorize demonic activities in my life. Take it away. I'm willing to pay whatever price. Who is ready to make that decision tonight? Oh, that's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. Nothing will ever change in your life. Nothing will ever change in your destiny. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming your father. Some of us are angry at where we are coming from. I wish I didn't come. Well, you are from there now. So you can as well calm down. You're already hoping that you will soon change your indigent certificate. That's not the issue. Indigent certificate will not change your destiny. When your mindset changes. Some of us have disowned our parents because they represent pictures of such failure you don't want to be associated the day you look at your you have been telling everybody that your father is your uncle it's time to tell the truth
Some of us have lied that our parents are abroad. They are not abroad. It's time to tell the truth. That man is my father. He may not have done well, but I will rise. What he could not eat, I will give him. Where he could not go, I will bring him. All this life of falsehood and lies and a fake impression of success will destroy us. We have to come to a point where we admit that there is something about our mindset. For some of us, it has become strongholds. You betray everybody that comes close to you. It's an attitude. It has never been an issue. You are a loving person. You love God. But you betray. You are not trustworthy at all. Any information they tell you is the same thing as telling a radio station. It's just like they took it to FM and said, let just tell the whole. And you are very happy. You are a pretty lady, but that's your own becoming. Every guy that comes after two weeks, he just does as if he's going to come back and disappears. Because every time they see that thing. The Bible says, Naaman was the captain of the army of Syria. Second Kings 5. He said, but. We must deal with the bots in our lives tonight. And if you are unwilling to take responsibility, let me guarantee you, you will never see the hand of God. Number one, Lord, I recognize, I admit that the quality of my life today is dependent on my decisions, which have been products of my mindset. I may not have seen things accurately, but right now I ask you to help me. Number two, number two how to pull down strongholds after admitting this number two is casting out the demons that keep the faulty mindset you must cast out those spirits that keep those mindsets because when a mindset has become a stronghold a demon spirit is involved. You will never enter a man's house and spoil the goods until you bind the strong man. And casting out demons there involves number one, destroying their legal hold over your life. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Please listen to me. All these demon spirits and these principalities that leech over our destinies, they do it on legal basis. And the Bible says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimonies. That's where we talk of covenants and curses and yokes that cast spells over people's minds. Control their mindsets. You must cast those demons. You must cast those devils. And if you think there is no spirit to cast out, you are joking. You are joking big time. There are wicked spirits that leech and become strongholds. So every time God wants to step into your life, they build fortifications. They have kept families poor. They have kept many people downcast. You must break their legal hold. It's not enough to cast out devils. That which gives them a legitimate ground on your life must be dealt with. And the blood is the mystery that solves that. Because the blood is a price in the spirit. The highest price. The price that can open any door. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Are we getting blessed tonight? We are getting into the heart of the matter now. Please let me have your attention. Let my life be the temple of the spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy house.
habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer a sacrifice of praise so feel the Bible says in whom the God of this world are you seeing that there are spirits involved blinded their minds he did something it's an enchantment over your mind it's a spell that controls your mind no matter what you are told and that's what authorizes demons you sleep in the night and there are all kinds of spirits coming to molest you you go on prayer and fasting and in the middle of the prayer and fasting is still happening there is a legal hold. It's not just in Jesus' name, go. I'm telling you, listen to me. Oh, yes. Whenever something good is about coming into your life, a man or a woman or a snake or a serpent or something, these are mysteries in the spirit. Demons don't find pleasure in anything. They, it's, 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 a, it's a mystery, it's a code in the spirit that activates the operation of failure. Some of you is during exam certain strange things happen to you enchantments mindsets that have been blinded by demonic activities and you want to rise every time you want to rise all they need to do is touch those codes and it brings you back you want to stop the clubbing you want to stop all of those things the day you make that determination a strange mystery happens in your life and it reduces you back you are in a dirty relationship that is ungodly you pray and you make a vow and say i'm going to send a text to this brother and say enough is enough i'm ready to move forward and these mysteries are activated again and you who said you will stop you will now call him and carry your two legs and go to his house but mindset he said in whom the God and to make matters worse you truly have a stronghold when they are talking to you and you do not even see the need for change have you seen people like that that's the classic example there are people that can be sitting you are talking to them and to you is supposed to be very clear that this rubbish they are doing is not taking them anywhere and they look at you when you finish they just laugh there are people like that they will escort you for koinonia and come and leave you here. They say to bros, tomorrow now, it will be. And they turn back and you are wondering. And powerful worship is going on. In whom the God of this world, the God of this system has what? Blinded their minds. It's like a, it's not just blinded like, um, it's a spell. That's why some of our parents, can be doing the things they are doing mindset god will bless them they will carry the money and be giving the children of rich people and you are dying in your house not even a rapper for your mother they've not paid your school fees and when you talk to them they don't even see the need to change they say i know what i'm doing the god of this world has blinded their minds you must cast out the demons that fortify these mindsets and make them strongholds. Number three, when that happens, then you engage in what the Bible calls the renewal of the mind. The renewal of the mind is useless until there is first an admittance until the spirits that are responsible for holding this mindset are casted out. Then you are now released. Now look up, please. This is the problem with many deliverance ministries in Nigeria. Listen to me. You think God is calling you to the deliverance ministry? Just listen to me before you add to this confusion that we have in this country. Many people 
fulfill the first condition. Yes, I think something is wrong. Something is moving in my body. Huh? Of, I have repeated cycle of failure. Now you go to a man of God. Step one. Step two, you believe the demons are casted out. But number three, there is no renewal. And the Bible tells us the mystery of demonic operations. When a spirit leaves a man, huh? it goes through arid regions, dry places, seeking for a place of habitation and not finding any. This is what the demon will tell the man. He said, I will arise and go back to my house. He's still calling the man his house. And then he returns back and the Bible says he finds the place swept, clean, but empty. Swept, clean, but empty. And when the demon sees that is still the old mindset that is there, he now gathers seven other demons greater than itself and says, let's build a fortification. And you find out that the man's latter state is even worse. That's why you can see that a man can be delivered. Two months, he may get some level of breakthrough. And after three or four months, he gets back not even square one, square zero. And then we keep blaming a lot of men of God and saying, that, that means that my man, my man is not genuine. That deliverance is not true. We have a responsibility. The renewing of your mind. What does it mean to renew your mind? It means to passionately pursue. To know God's perspective about life. To renew your mind means to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed by the word of God. I take it again. The renewal of the mind means to passionately seek to know God's perspective about life. That's what I call wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything. And then to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed in the word of God. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world. The Greek word is aeon. The thinking pattern, the mindset that comes with this system. There is an ideology that comes with this system. It said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. You're not there yet? By the renewing of your mind. He said that ye may prove that which is um, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. So how do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. That means there are things I've been doing that is probably keeping me poor. I've not been tithing. I've not been giving. I walk in a life of selfishness and materialism and self-centeredness. All of a sudden, those spirits and demons of poverty have leached through that mindset and created a stronghold out of it. Now I come and I make up my mind to want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. And when I'm delivered from the operation of those demons, then I now begin to adopt heaven's ideology. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? And so on and so forth. And then, the moment there is that renewal, Satan comes and he cannot find his doorway to your life again. At that point, your liberty becomes permanent. Deliverance is never complete until it is backed up by a process of transformation. That's why people, people who get delivered and are not channeled to sit under a heavy teaching anointing where the principles of the kingdom are taught will go back, I guarantee you, back into what they were delivered from. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. 
It says, let this mind be in you. Let this mindset, permit this mindset to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. When Jesus walked the earth, he had a mindset. There was a mindset that made the waves and the, and the seas obey him. There was a mindset that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living in him. There was a mindset that made his enemies not to be able to resist nor can say his words. There was a mindset that helped, that made him to fulfill his assignment. And the Bible says, let this mind permit it to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And the instrument to get that, that mindset into you is the word of God. The word of God accurately taught and accurately explained. Number four, how to pull down strongholds. Number four, you need to take steps and make new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. You need to now take steps and start making new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. Your life became a disaster because you were taking steps based on a mindset that was ungodly. Now that you have paid the price to adopt a new mindset, start taking steps based on that new mindset and you find out that your life will start changing. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, hallelujah, it begins to list certain things and it tells you, think on these things. Let your mindset, say, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Allow these things to frame your mindset so that your decision will now become true, honest, just, pure decisions. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 2. We looked at that, but let's look at it again. Shibala kupratishika. I announce to somebody tonight that the devil is a liar over your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. Please read together. I want to read. The apostle is speaking. He said, fulfill my joy that ye be like-minded. There is a mindset that I propose to you. This is my admonishment. Please be like-minded. Don't have a different mindset. There is a, a mindset that made the Holy Spirit work mightily in me. He said, be like-minded. Be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Brothers and sisters, your destiny is at the mercy of of your mindset your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset the quality of your home is at the mercy of your mindset the excellency of your spiritual life is at the mercy of your mindset The quality of your finance or your level of finance is at the mercy of your mindset. Your level of greatness in life, among other factors, is at the mercy of your mindset. He leads me and guides me to the city of a he leads me and guides me 
to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Listen, God wants to take you far. But are you ready to hold on to his hands tonight? And say, Lord, if it means me dropping certain devilish aspects of culture, it drops tonight. If it means me dropping certain aspects of my past, it will drop tonight. Listen, let me tell you something about your past. If your past does not inspire you, dump it. Dump it. Dump it. There is no reason to meditate and think about a past. I don't care what you have done. If your past does not inspire you, pack it up this night and throw it out of your life. Oh, holy God, I know you will not fail. God is concerned, you can count on him. God is dependable. God is reliable. His part of the equation is guaranteed. But the question is, are you ready to hold on to his hand? There are many of you that need to leave the hands of culture tonight. There are many of us that need to leave the hands of family backgrounds and association. Listen to me. Love is a command. Association is not. If you need to pack up from some devilish associations that will not take you to the place of destiny, I don't care how long they have been your friends, separate from them. Abraham had to leave the servants because he was going to climb a mountain. Do you realize that there is a place in destiny? God is dependable. God is reliable. Are you not tired of that habit? You have prayed and prayed and prayed. It's not just the issue of prayer. It's the issue of alignment. Alignment. Your anger has destroyed too many opportunities in your life. It's time to think about it. Your self-centeredness has destroyed too many open doors. Your hatred and resentment is a strong your affinity for immorality has wrecked more havoc in your life than you can imagine. But tonight, before we talk about demons, are you prepared? My job tonight is to bring you to a point where you see the need to embrace a new ideology. A little boy born in the States called Gray Farah is now a motivational speaker, multi-millionaire. At a very young age, was born by an African American, could not amount to anything. The family was poor, the gentleman was poor, but he made a decision to break status quo. And he started painting stones. Very tender age, he started painting stones and giving people to cover, to put on their books. And people were laughing at him. He went from door to door because he knew that he had a prophetic destiny to bring his family out of the financial misery. Hallelujah. Eventually, at age 12, that young boy became a multi-millionaire. At age 14, he was sitting on the board of over 10 companies. At age 20, he was given two honorary PhDs. He's 29 right now. And he's one of the most influential black millionaires in America. Men who decided to cooperate with destiny. Listen. No matter what is happening in your life, you are not the first to go through it. You can't sit down and keep regretting. Forget about what has happened. The Bible says, this one thing I do, 
forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Some of us have meditated too much about yesterday. God gave you the gift of today and tomorrow to remedy the mistakes of yesterday. Every time you wake up to a new day, it's God's gift to you that there is still hope for your life. We used to sing a song. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The relationship failed since last year, but till now, you have not moved forward. You've used one year to regret. Whereas you would have gotten married, you would have even been pregnant now. One year to regret. And the person that messed up your life has settled down. He's even born again now. Maybe he's a pastor. And you are there dying. Listen. Two wrongs don't make a right. It doesn't matter what has happened. Retrace your steps now. Some of you played around with certain opportunities that God gave you. Accept tonight that it was because there was a mindset. Allow the Lord to adjust it and be ready to move forward. The Lord is going to be doing great things next week. But it's not enough. There are many of us. We've been coming for miracle service after miracle service. But every time the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life. There is a stronghold that frustrates his activity in your life. So it looks like your situation is so difficult, God cannot break through. It's not true. We have three prayer points tonight. The first prayer point is, is a cry before God. Truly, I trust that God will grant us grace to admit tonight. And take responsibility for the way our lives have been. For those of us who are experts at blaming people, forget about it. Take responsibility. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. He leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me. Come on, join us if you can sing. To the place of death. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. This song is a prophetic song. Listen, as you raise this song, I'd like you to wave goodbye to the past. We're going to start by dealing with the past. I don't care what went right or wrong. 2013, 2000 and whatever is gone. As you raise this song, I'd like you to announce to your destiny that you are still coming. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song and I'd like you to sing it from the depths of your heart that he's leading you. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. failures of yesterday goodbye to the failures of yesterday this one thing I do forgetting the past forgetting the past forgetting the past forgetting the past, forgetting the past. I said to us I pressed to us forget about the past sing it as a prophecy over your life he leaves me he leaves me the city of above, he leads me and guides me. Just the voices. To my place Sing it as a prophecy. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place.
place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Listen. There was a man in the Bible called Saul of Tarsus. The Bible tells us that that guy had a mindset based on his ideology. He thought killing believers was a way to please God. But on his way to Damascus, he encountered a light. When he encountered a light, something happened to him. He did not sit down regretting and crying. He turned and he knew that he had a great destiny. When Stephen was being martyred, Paul, Saul then was seated and they placed their garments close to him there was an idol worshiper called Abraham hallelujah and he belonged to a land called all of the Chaldeans he was an idol worshiper his father had taught him idol worship listen listen to me do you realize that Abraham was not supposed to be the father of faith that prophetic destiny belonged to his father Read your Bible. His father failed and he refused to align himself. And God called Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, the first person God called was his father. And then God called him and said, Abraham, he said, come out. That's our first prayer point. Come out of your father's house. Come out of every failure. Come out of every regret. You will never be able to open up yourself for new things. When you're still sitting to regret the past. Now I'd like you to lift your voice. And I'd like you to prophesy. And say the past is gone. The past is gone. The past is gone. Go ahead and pray. Ahead, pray. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the failures that are behind. Please pray. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me. look up the bible says if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves the next prayer point is a prayer point of sincere humility and brokenness to say lord i take responsibility something about my mindset authorized the devil into my life and i take responsibility and i ask for mercy tonight lift your voice and pray cry out for mercy there's nothing to be embarrassed about it go ahead and pray please pray inside and outside this is for your destiny Pray. 
pray I ask for mercy I ask for mercy Lord I ask for mercy there is a mindset my family has that has authorized witchcraft that has authorized limitations there is a mindset I have that has made me a recurrent failure tonight I take responsibility hallelujah hallelujah to praise your name and I have no fear of what tomorrow brings I live I live to praise your name you can't keep being afraid of your destiny there is a certainty there is an assurance I live I live I live Your beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. Prophesy. going to pray. Listen. Hold on. The next prayer point is going to be very strategic because some of you will be delivered here right now. Hallelujah. You're going to command every devil and every spirit that has had access to leech onto your mindset and authorize hell. You're going to pray and say in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus I command your hold over my mind to be lifted, lift up your voice and pray come on pray koinonia strongholds we command spirits we command forces command demons and devils shake pa 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 rekete te koto pa ka ta pa 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 so to to kotes demon spirits demon spirits that are being responsible He must let you go tonight. Come on, pray. I no longer need you in my life. Spirits responsible for crystallizing mindsets and God They made my family poor. They made failures out of my family. No way. I arise to change. I arise to change things. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands as I challenge those devils of darkness. They must let you go. There are spirits 
that have held on. I tell you, I see a lot of it as I stand on stage here. But they must go right now. The time is up. It's a new season. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, I decree and I declare that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been a victim of demonic forces, spells, yokes that have crystallized thought patterns that authorize Satan in your life in the name of Jesus and at the count of three let the fire man de let the fire of the Holy Ghost visit such a one and that those spirits must go I invoke it in the realm of the spirit right now at the count of three I like you to shout that name that is above all names listen listen I'm already seeing in the spirit there will be dramatic deliverances right now dramatic some of you you will feel fire from your hands and your head fire literally literally it must give way right now are you ready now at the count of three i invoke the powers of the heavens and i decree and i declare that every spirit that is responsible for wrong thought patterns at the count of three may it live your life now are you ready one two three I command those devils out, out, out. I command foul spirits. Inside and outside, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let no spirit stand this fire. Let no devil stand this fire. Let no enchantment. I provoke that in the name of Jesus, every enchantment, every mystery that is responsible for casting spells and invocations over your mind to trap you. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of God land upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time. There is no hiding. I like you to lay your hands on your head. That's the instruction the Lord gives me. I tell you something will happen to some of you right now that will surprise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let those hands on your head become hands of fire. And I declare that every power, every power, is resting upon your mind and destiny as you shout that name Jesus let that fire bring freedom to you right now are you ready one two three I break courses I break courses I break courses I break chinses. I command spells. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Every altar, I don't care where it is, whether in your village, wherever, that is servicing any enchantment, any altar, Makoto Parate, Dekete Prokota, that has taken any sacrifice that puts you in bondage right now. At the count of three, I command those altars to burn into pieces and that you be released. One, two, three, be free now. I command those altars 
they burn with fire they burn with fire oh you must be free tonight you must be free it's time to rise to a new season hallelujah strongholds that keep mighty men to remain weak in life strongholds you would have gone to school for years but it made sure you never pass jam it works for everybody until it comes to your turn then you make a foolish decision you don't even know why you said what you said and it closes the door to you We are going to sing this song. I see a river flowing in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit. Fresh water. And I believe that this is bringing freshness to many people. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. Give it your best. As we sing that song, prophesy it as your song of exodus. Out of certain nonsense. He said, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. He said, and I shall be anointed. Let me tell you something. If you are not tired of failure in your life, you can go. But for as many who are saying, Lord, this is it. I am sick and tired. This year must not finish with my life like this. I'd like you to sing this song from the depths of your heart. Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My Lord, I want the increase that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say of my soul. But your prophecy tonight is that you, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for, for me. You're my glory. For you to rise to a new dimension. It's time for you to rise to a new dimension in the sky. is showing me something. I'm seeing a mask. A mask like the face of, of an idol or something. And there is a particular family I'm seeing that worships that thing. It's, it's, it's currently in your house. I don't know if it's in the village or somewhere, but I'm seeing a mask. A mask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whichever family this word is for, I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. 
Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to a lady. We still have miracle service, but um, men die in your family. In fact, right now, there are only about one or two that are left from what the Lord is showing me. Men, whether they get married or whatever, they just die mysteriously. Please, who is that? I'm just led to pray for the person. My glory lift her up on my head. My glory. Hold your hands, both of you. Okay, you're part of it. Come, hold your hands. Please make sure you understand the word. Don't just be emotional about it. I see mysterious death. Men, not women. Men, men, men. Hallelujah. Look at me. The Bible says for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, that he may annihilate the works of darkness. For this purpose, I'm going to pray for you. You are representing your families, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And that curse must be broken. It must be broken. For many of you, they are covenants. Ordinances of darkness. It's time for your destiny to go. Lift those hands. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your fire. Let fire fall. Not just upon them. But upon the foundations of those families. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I lay my hands upon you. I command that those things are broken. Broken, 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 broken in the name of Jesus. 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 Broken. The cause out, out of her. I command, I see a spirit. I see a man wearing a red skirt. I'm seeing a man wearing a red skirt. In the name of Jesus, release her destiny now. Now, 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 now. Broken, broken, broken. I cause altars. There is a cause in this family. There is a cause in our family. I set fire upon those altars of darkness. I release everyone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Those altars in Cameroon. I command fire upon those altars of witchcraft. That ties your success and your progress. Oh, let her come. Have I prayed for her? I pray for you. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that this evil ends. This plague of death ends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It ends in the name of Jesus Christ. You are surrounding up. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Go back to your seat. I would have done this next week. But the Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing a number of people I see plots of darkness over your exams. Some of you, it has started happening to you. And there are things we must settle right now for you to write a meaningful exam. Some of you are getting into malpractice because of this pressure. Lift your hands. You study and you don't understand. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to start speaking. Not everybody, but there are specific people that the hand of God will locate them. I see academic chains. 
chains. You are not dull. 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 Lift your hands, Father. In the name I see fire bursting, bursting across the congregation. Everyone under any academic spell, help them, please. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, as you shout that name, Jesus, you will feel fire. It will be on your hands. Hands, 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 hands. One, two, three. Release them. Release them now. Release them now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. of visitation has come. Come. Are you friends or sisters or something? You are sisters. Because I saw the same thing happening to you, happening to her. There is witchcraft in your family. And if that thing is not broken, who is married among you? You are married. Where's your husband, madam? He's at home. I need to pray for you. Hi, this, this is evil. Ah! If I don't pray for you, well, it's not it's a personal thing, but I need to pray for you so that you will not start having problems in your home. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I must pray for you. Number two, God wants to bring prosperity to your family. Huh? Look at me. This is the biggest desire of you and your husband. Is that true? As you are standing like this, you are, you are suffering. Things are not even working well because there is witchcraft. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My sister, look at me. four major things that are going to happen to your life between now and December after I pray for you I'm not going to say them now but God will surprise you, he's going to shock you because you are a nice person but you see what is stopping your progress in life is witchcraft I don't know if before now you believe that witchcraft exists or not but if you don't please believe it because you will see what will happen Father in the name of Jesus I curse the power of witchcraft I stretch my hands over you and I command it to leave you now I see something like a crown on your head and I command that spirit to leave you. It goes never to return to you. And Father, these four things you have revealed may they happen and let her see it. Madam, look at me. Go and tell your husband November 17th November 17th is a day of mighty breakthrough for the family. Mighty breakthrough for the family. God bless you. Thank you for lifting. 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 Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says there were ten lepers who have been discussing. Is this how we will continue? Abi, people will come and drop offering or whatever for them. And the Bible says they had. That means they had been, they had received an assurance that Jesus was able to do it. Is that true? Now watch what happened. This was their first manifestation of faith. When Jesus was passing, what happened? They lifted up. Are you getting me now? And they did what? The Bible did not say they lifted it and just 
they just whispered to lift up means they shouted and they said jesus master you know jesus doesn't walk alone i'm sure his peers were saying hurry up they said we may be crippled but our mouth is not crippled we are going to shout till we get your attention listen did jesus respond that's how he will always respond when we manifest faith next verse and when he saw them he said unto them listen hi i love jesus goodness he just said the only reason why you are calling me is because you think i can help you if you really believe stand up go and show yourself as simple as that no grammar of saying okay if i said this then thee should grammar that thing we do is not called faith if you take action god is committed listen the bible says and it came to pass watch this as they this is the dynamics listen i want to explain something powerful here as they they were that means their being clean was tied to their going as they they were this sign shall not go before if you prove god sent you start moving and he said the signs the signs will follow those who can act this is why we are here tonight hallelujah just one last scripture and then we'll pray goodness my spirit is fired up john 9 let's look at one example of one blind man john 19 verse 1 to 8 but we'll just look at verse 7 jesus came look at me there are so many interesting people that do lots of things in church do you know that there are people that when they come when hands are about to be laid on them they say don't lay hands on me just speak you are a sick patient the doctor said turn for injection you say i don't like injection walk out of the hospital as simple as that when there's a way the sickness will press you that even if the syringe is the type they give a cow you say just give me When you still have options you are not yet pushed to the wall look let me tell you there is a way life will push you to the wall that you must react are you getting my point verse 7 are we there john what did i say john 9 not 19 9 listen look up please let me just tell the story quickly remember the man who was born blind the bible says jesus spat on the floor correct and he started making clay i can imagine the well, the man could not see now watch this Hiya, i love jesus jesus inspires me i'm telling you he said unto him to who the blind man jesus was not talking to the person who was holding his hand he spoke to the blind man he said oh god go wash in the pool of silo which by interpretation is sent and the bible says he went his way therefore and washed and returned see how will jesus speak to a blind man oh yeah i've done my own part if you like sit down here for one week if you are interested go and wash remember what the prophet told naaman he said go to jordan and bath while he was giving all those confessions i will not go i will go i will not go he said continue if you want to manifest faith carry two of your legs march to jordan he was saying are there no other river this is many people think it just stops at talking 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 naman was talking rapping standing in front of elijah's he didn't even come out he said tell him go and wash and do it seven times he went there it was a very muddy water hallelujah bath the first time nothing happened he was getting angry but when the word is fulfilled god is committed i can imagine the holy ghost just roaming around that pool number two he could not move because until your obedience is complete number three the guy could not move at a point he would say oh god he said seven times seven seven that was the word number five he would have just left and gone back and the holy ghost would say two more times 
for my spirit to come in listen the bible says the moment he entered the seventh time he just came out and he saw his skin that means the holy ghost was waiting anxiously you do your part you do your part and see the power of the highest you do your part and see that cancer melt you do your part and see that curse broken in your family hallelujah at the beautiful gate there was a man there the bible says he begged for arms is that true peter and john went to pray at the hour of prayer and the bible says he was begging them he was not begging to stand up because he did not believe are you getting me so he had no reason to take action because he was not convicted but peter did something because faith comes by hearing when you hear of someone's ability he said mr man i don't have money to give you but there is something i have in the name of the lord jesus if you believe i have this he said stand look up the man sat down there and was looking at them and was wondering and peter remembered the teachings of jesus and the bible says peter held his hand and said stand up and the bible says he leaping he leaping he leaping the holy ghost was moving peter get this man to take a step in every area of life listen there is a role you have to play are you getting me there's no time i would have shown you how that for every area of your life when the word came in samaria by this time tomorrow nothing happened but the power of god was moving waiting for those who would take action all the people in the land including the emojis did not go and the spirit of god went to four lepers they said we will stay here and die we are lepers but let's stand up the bible says when they went the, the enemy started hearing the sound this is the amplification of the spirit the sound of chariots until there is action you are not manifesting faith if you can get this teaching tonight by the time you are coming for february miracle service you'll be shocked because see this as simple as what i'm sharing is this is the missing link you are praying and fasting but you have not found out the conditions for prosperity it's not demons it will not change till the day you find out and walk in it are you getting what i'm saying there are keys that's your part when you see listen I submit to you with all humility are you seeing this crowd that are gathered they did not come by magic if you think it's by magic try it people are not idiots are you getting my point I said by with all humility I hope it doesn't look like I'm bragging I'm just trying to communicate a point do you know what it means for people to come and sit on the fence sit everywhere there are keys if you don't have it you don't have it but when you find it i can imagine the holy ghost based on the conviction he gave us while we started preparing as decoration was working the power of god said now you are responding based on what you believe i'll do tonight therefore let me begin to bring all the people to honor the word don't you see that this is how faith works listen there are many people who will never marry because they are waiting until the day a sponsor or a donor gives them two million god has spoken to you marry in june how much do you have hundred thousand but god said start moving he said hey lord I, this girl's parents the way they looked at me that day what is your business this sign shall follow the moment you are going your uncle starts calling and says i just felt like calling you he did not just feel the holy ghost the one who confirms the word hallelujah listen the sister who gave a testimony about the change in her result imagine if they prayed for her now a prophetic word had come is that not true she sat down she said lord i believe your word what did she do she got up as she was did you see that when they checked they did not find her paper but God said am I too small and you just drop the paper 
on the table did you not hear the testimony listen when you play your part i'm telling you in an inexplainable way god is committed and tonight i want you to know that your part is to have come see i tell people with all humility that for coming to this ground alone is already 50 percent of your problem so you know why hold on if you know the demonic forces that as many people hear what happened this morning and the way the devil tried to stop them from coming many of you will agree with me that things came up some of you didn't even have money but you said if it means trekking i will trek while you were trekking the holy ghost was saying mark them mark them practitioners of the world they must be blessed tonight some of you came outside and you still sat down your friend said let's go back you say i'm not going back you can go but this night although i'm outside my ministry must change my business must change this cancer must die rise up on your feet everybody go ahead and pray in tongues in one minute god is about to do mighty things in this place rise up on your feet everybody Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I'm convinced that you are able. You can change my story. In a few minutes, the Lord will do mighty things in this place. In a few minutes, the Lord will do mighty things in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Please listen to me. I tell you the truth. I came here tonight with a very unusual unction. I know the things that I've been, the head of department, prayer band, he even sensed it. I remember he sent me a text. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost is in a place, nobody can tell the extent of devastation he can do to the kingdom of hell. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, no matter how far you are, make sure tonight, as you hear the word, listen, I don't know the issue that you came here with. I can only communicate the few because of time constraint and because we see in part i must not mention your case are you getting what i'm saying this atmosphere carries an anointing so no matter how far no matter what the issue is it will bow it will bow tonight hallelujah listen listen as i begin to rebuke sicknesses we're going to be very fast we don't have time for a lot of things hallelujah god assured me that there will be dramatic dramatic instant healings dramatic instant healings now listen please When we begin to pray, I don't know if we'll call the people out and lay hands or whatever it is we will do. Make sure, remember the teaching. 
you must take action you must take action that action look at what our mommy shared remember the, the, the testimony our mommy shared do you know that we brought I sent that they should bring a seat for her what? she refused as a proof to the devil are you getting my point that, that I may be old but I'm well are you ready to drop those chains now there is no need please hear me there is no need tonight to walk away with whatever situation for there is a name there are families represented here tonight tonight you will pass the red sea and you will part with egypt forever families under bondages yokes there are many of us who have come under spells it's time for us to check those devils out of the lives of people because the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession Hallelujah. I tell you, if you see what the Lord is showing me in the spirit, goodness, the devil is in trouble this night. Lift your hands, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. hallelujah hear me wherever you are the power of god is going to begin to move across the crowd and everywhere you are there is a name tonight that is above every demon every yoke every spell and at the mention of that name devils will leave hallelujah hallelujah at the count of three wherever you are goodness there will be so much deliverances outside listen as i count three i want you to shout that name that's your action of faith at the top of your voice and we will begin to command this wicked spirit already the power of god is moving are you ready now one, two, three. Go shake I go spirits. I go devils. Devils, come out! Come out! Come out! Come out! Come out! Now, come out! Go cross the pressure. Outside! Outside! The fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Bring them out. The fire is falling outside. Lift 
lift up your hands for all ye gates. I command spirits, devils, let those people go now. Bring them out, bring them out. Hey, outside, the fire of God is falling. The fire of God is falling. Help the ushers, please. If they need more people, help them. Let's save time. Let's save time. We don't have time, please. The power of God is falling outside. Falling outside. Falling outside. Every spell. Hallelujah. Just those outside, lift your hands. The first overflow and the second, both of you lift your hands. Hey! At the count of three, I want you to shout, Jesus. There will be a rain of deliverance. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Hallelujah. Hush. Please follow me. We have to hurry up. Listen. Goodness. There are people here. Listen. You can't sleep sound in the night. Someone must come and sleep with you or oppress you. There are people who see snakes. This lady is one of them. Let her go. Come out now. Out. Out. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Out. Hallelujah. Now listen, please. Please, let's hurry up. Just follow me. Just keep bringing them. Goodness. There are so many angels outside. There's no hiding. Not in the light of God. Second day. In Terekaba, Shakapa, Pareka, Sopros, Kebaria, Kepros, Kopoto, Kapa, Kepres, Ketekeleba, let her go now by the fire of the holy ghost i challenge you right now in the name of jesus break every chain out of her now now Come out of her right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. Let her go now. Now. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. 
Listen, listen. Many of you don't know why. Listen. Hear me. Please listen. Let's hurry up. Do you know that behind the situation of many people are the workings of these wicked spirits? Listen to me, please. Don't let anybody fool you. There are some of you, you may not need to fall, but deliverance is already happening to you. So don't you think it's just those that come out? No. Once the word goes, some of you are already feeling things leaving you. Look, look at this girl for instance. You really believe a lady will have this strength? Three people holding her. Wickedness is real. Leave her alone. On your knees and out of her. Quickly, just leave her. On your knees and out of her in the name of the Lord Jesus. Watch the power of faith, all of you. Watch just... No, don't worry. Don't concentrate on her when she does it. Leave her alone. Listen. Listen. You see why it's good to be spiritual? Because now... One brother will just get up and come. You don't know where you are going. I'm not talking about her now. Please. Nobody should stigmatize her. Are you getting my point? One brother just comes and bounces. You don't know what is happening around the spiritual arena of somebody's life. You come and enter into something that will weep out. Look at She cannot even go out. Look at She's standing at the door. She can't even cross the door. She will go on her knees. Don't worry. You will see the authentic power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Behind the pain of many families is the operation of darkness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of our families, some of you as you are standing here, don't think God is visiting you alone. You should understand us here. Your salvation is not complete until your household is touched. These are the spirits. That's why you try and try. You keep doing. This is what has stopped the admission of others. This is what has stopped the marriage of others. This is what has killed the destiny of many people. But tonight, you will part ways with it forever. Now I want to pray. I see a lot of many of you will be surprised what will happen now. Hallelujah. There are so many people that are tormented in their dreams. Listen to me. You can't have a sound sleep. But you see people come. Animals chasing you. All kinds of devilish demonic things. Snakes. Some of you having intercourse with all kinds of people. Whether a man, whether a woman when you are about to go for a job interview these things happen to you and that's the end of it it doesn't matter what happens tonight there will be a separation once and for all lift up your hands again please lift up your hands let's hurry up whether they are causes whether they are yokes whether they are manifestations of spirit husband spirit wife wherever that devil is as you shout jesus i see fire fire will move from inside to outside and many people will be delivered right now at the count of three are you ready thank you father let your fire move right now one two three go 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 spirit husband spirit wife Demons of darkness, ancestral causes. Go, 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 go. Serpents, scorpions, marine spirits. Out, 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 out. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, 
For all these people outside, I'm speaking to the spirits now. At the count of three, the fire of God burns you out of these people. Every spirit, hear my voice. I speak from the realm of the spirit right now. The fire of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three. You go and return no more. Leave them. Leave them. Go and return no more. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. You have peptic ulcer. Lay your hands on your chest right now. Quickly, please. Please, let's save time. Peptic ulcer. God is healing peptic ulcer now. Now, I don't know if we have all the time. Hallelujah. We want to take a few instant testimonies. Some of these people, when they stand up from being delivered, many of them will stand up with all kinds. Some of them are having visionary experiences right now. I hear the chains falling, falling, yeah. I give the chains. I give the chains. Oh, she back it, take it I give the chains. I give the chains. Now listen, listen. 
let me explain this we always do but for the sake of those who are coming don't you think that those who are being delivered here are witches are you getting my point because as you are standing there you are receiving your own deliverance this is a family this is an oppression of darkness we don't want to know what the reasons are they must go are you getting my point now peptic ulcer in the name of jesus god is going to heal peptic ulcer right away some of you listen some of you will feel let me see how many people with peptic ulcer inside and outside just lift your hands let me know all right quickly as i pray for you for many of you you will feel something lift off you if that happens to you run out quickly and come out run out quickly please let's save time in the name of jesus i'm seeing a lot of blood substances around the chest of people i cause that devil of ulcer i command the wound heal now heal and close up now heal and close up now not later Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Regina. Regina. Who is Regina? Regina. Please, when I call your name, quickly, quickly, hurry up. Regina. The Lord, listen, the Lord is setting your family free from witchcraft. Are you hearing me? This is what God is doing. This lady is going to begin to cough out things. Please take her outside. Come. She's going to begin to cough out things. Out of her now. Take her outside, please. Please clean this up. The Lord is setting your family free. Look at me. You will begin to see dramatic things happen in your family because this has been the finger of darkness thank you jesus christ let there be healing let there be restoration in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now there's someone there's someone here you feel movement around your right leg you literally feel like an object like a snake moving around especially when you're on your bed who is that person the lord is revealing to me please quickly let's save time once i mention your case just come out quickly so that whether you are inside or outside let's just hurry up very quickly we don't have time goodness help us lord the devil is in trouble tonight <laughs> Zekoto. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. You are the person? Okay, hold on. You've been having this pain. Please tell us, how has it been? Yeah, it started from here. Listen, listen, please. For about three years now. About three years. What do you feel, sir? Feel pain here. They scanned, so nothing. They scanned, there was nothing. And you feel it moving? Yes, up to now. I'm even... Up till now, even now as you are talking. Watch it disappear now. Watch it disappear. You, you are an elderly man. You get my point. So you will not come and be lying when it's not done. But you watch and see what the power of God will do. Because they scanned it medically. Goodness, please let me do something quickly. I see this lady wearing a crown. Let it go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lay your hands on her. Anybody, lay your hands Thank you, Jesus. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, let her go now. All our workers are anointed. It doesn't matter who lays hands on them. Out! An anointed hand is upon you and you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sir, look at me. The Lord Jesus brings you healing. Complete healing. Thank you, Jesus. I want to rebuke that spirit right now. That devil of darkness, let him go right now. In the name of Jesus. Wow, something is happening to you. You feel something happening to you? 
in the name of Jesus Christ. That devil, go! Now in the name of Jesus. Can you walk now? Just shake your leg. You feel pain? Only here. Where? Right here. All right, lay your hands. Lay your hands. Lay your own hands there. The power of God is going through you, that very place. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cause pain. Tell me, do you feel any pain there? You feel any pain there? It's going. It's going right. It's going right. Look at him smiling. It's going right. Now check it. Check. Thank you. Thank you. What is happening? Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. Go, it will go. Everything will leave. Thank you, Jesus. Now bend down. Go ahead. Bend down. Just no, not kneel down. Just bend down. Up and down. Exercise. Yes. I want the pain leave. Any pain. Any pain. Come on now. Give Jesus strength. Any pain there. Now. It's going. It's going. Where? Where exactly? You should be totally healed. What did the doctors tell you? These are demonic things. About, about, about six. Six years. Five or six scanning. Anytime, listen. Anytime you scan, you see the doctors checking, checking. And they tell you, we don't know what is wrong. Save yourself headache. Just come for prayers quick. Because it's the classic sign that this is the finger of God. This is the finger of Satan. It's exactly three years. It's exactly three years. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I'm healed. In, in Jesus' name. Now, check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Go ahead. Hit, hit yourself there. That's what I want. Until you don't feel any pain. What do you feel? Everything. Everything. When everything, when everything disappears, look at God healing. Regina, Madam, ah, now wow, oh, look at the spirit of death lingering over you. The devil would have taken your life in an accident. It would have been an accident, a bike accident. A car would hit you and kill you. That would be the end of it. Are you married? Where's your husband? We have to pray for him too. But well, let me pray for you. I cast that spirit of death. Go! No death. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Your mom feels movement. Hold my hands. We set her mom free right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go! In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there's somebody, please listen. This, this is where the pain is. The Lord is showing me. Just this side. I don't know whether it is, it's a bump, it's a pain, it's a swelling. Very serious at this side of your neck. Please, who is that person? The Lord is healing that person right now. The Lord is healing that person right now. Very quickly, the Lord is healing that person. The Lord is healing that person right now. Please, quickly, quickly, let's save time. The Lord is healing that person right now. Quickly, the Lord is healing that person. Come, you are the first person God will heal. The devil wants to bring madness on you. Hold on, look at me first. Don't show me your back. You, wait. The devil wants to bring madness on you. This is how you would have seen this guy. I don't know who knows him. You would have seen him walking on the street. Because it's a, sometimes you sit. Do you have any feeling? Maybe you are not yourself. You have those. Yes, sir. You have those kind of feelings. Sometimes you feel as if you don't even. It's like you don't know. Yes. This is madness. This thing would have come upon you last year. It was because of the hand of God. And the devil was determined that this year, this madness must follow you. But tonight, God will deliver you. You believe me? We have to pray for you. Because I'm seeing you tied in the spirit. This is what I'm seeing. Tied completely. God is touching someone there. Bring the lady. Let hope rise. I command that madness. Go! Right now. I see. Look at what is happening to him. Look at look at this. Look at this. How can somebody just start scratching his head because I said go? 
This is madness. The devil wanted to put up on you. Go, 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 go. Out of him right now. Take your devilish madness back to hell. Hallelujah. What's she here for? Your neck. Now all of you lay your hands. God will heal you right now. Please. Look at the number of people. How can I just guess that your neck is failing you? Lay your hands. The power of God will touch you right now. Bring that lady for me. Out! 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 You must go now. I'm seeing an altar burning. I'm seeing a shrine on fire. I'm seeing a shrine on fire. This is what is happening to this girl. I'm seeing a shrine, a shrine catching fire. Every shrine, every devil's shrine, where your name and that of your family member has been taken to, it catches fire now. It catches fire now. Hallelujah. Goodness. God is going to do a fantastic miracle outside. I'm seeing a hole in the teeth covering outside. God is filling up supernaturally a hole in the teeth. Please check it. If you confirm you are the one, don't tell us lies here. Please confirm it and come out. God is, God is filling holes. Holes. Literally, literally to close up. Hallelujah. Now, ladies, God wants to do a number of things. Irregular menstruation. God is going to heal a lot of these things. And then lump. Lump in the breast or around wherever abdominal region. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray remember action when i pray for you check yourself right now every lump in any part of anyone's body whether in the breast area in the back at the abdomen around any part of the body in the name of the lord jesus i cause that growth now let it disappear now let it disappear now let it disappear now now, now, long go in the name of Jesus. Now begin to check yourself. Begin to check yourself. Hallelujah. Now let's do this quickly. Every every other person, if you came here specifically for a healing miracle, please come out and line up here. Or if you brought somebody, please. Just line up Usher's protocol. Help us arrange them, please. Please be very orderly. No fighting. Let's hurry up. While that is happening, how many of you have not written your prayer requests? Please write it quickly, quickly. Write it quickly and let's have it. You came specifically, whether within Zaria or outside Zaria, you came specifically for healing. hallelujah specifically for healing please let's save time you can see that we're really out of time we started late hallelujah myself and bishop will minister to you listen please as we pray for you expect the power of god to touch you and as the power of god touches you begin to check yourself as you go back to your seat please come out line up once we pray for the first row just give thanks and the rest will just be praying in tongues worship team you're going to lead us 
very hot worship as we do this very very quickly hallelujah bishops so we are going to pray for you some of you are coming out what will happen is these wicked spirits that are responsible for these things will leave you are you following me now i know that there are some of you standing in for your loved ones so as we pray call them there are some of you put your phone on speaker when it's time to prophesy tell your loved ones a word is coming wherever they are let the power of god touch them hallelujah bless you worship team you are the great and mighty god so greatly to be praised beautiful for all situations you are the joy of the whole world you are the great and mighty god so greatly to be praised beautiful for all
affects him any okay but but we're going to pray that is a you came here and the lord jesus is going to visit you right now we don't fake what you see here there is a name that is above every other name hallelujah it doesn't matter who lays hands on you brothers and sisters there is an anointing yeah are you getting what i'm saying hallelujah i am serving the living God Out. His Out. name Out. is Jesus Out. Christ I see him die This is what I see He died and he rose And he gave me victory I am 
I am serving. I am serving the living God. Legs, goodness. Since when? Ten years. Ten years. How do are you a witness? Is you that brought? What what how do how does it shift? She will fall and can hold on. Look at me. Look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me. Look at me. Just look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Nikab, I speak to you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, no shifting for you again from today. I bring you the authority of the kingdom and the spirit that sponsors this wickedness out. Now, I command your ligaments, I command everything like Ezekiel 37 to be back. Walk. What do you feel? What do you feel? Look at, come up. Her ligaments for 10 years. She, she falls down by herself. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Look at this. Her kneecap used to shift. Her kneecap used to shift. You are, come, come, come on. Who are you to Who are you to her? A family friend. You are a what? Family friend. You know her. You know that this is true. Sister, look, look at the girl crying. Could she do this before? She couldn't do this. Her kneecap will shift and she will fall. That devil is a liar. Whatever the devil has taken out of its place, we bring it back in the name of Jesus. See, God is working on her. That wicked spirit, out! Come out right now. How dare you come upon the altar of God? Out! Out! Now, this is the... You see that? I told you many things. There are wicked spirits behind the activities of men. Let's hurry up. He died and rose. Jesus died. Can you 
They what? They initiated him into what? They gave him food. Then you'll be seeing spiritual something. You, you'll be seeing spiritual something that you, if he tell you, you'll be surprised. Oh, they initiated him. That devil is a liar. Bring him up. Uh -uh, don't, 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 please, don't cry. Hmm. This is your daughter. It's okay. See, mommy, look, let me tell you. Including you, God will set, God is setting her free. You should be happy. Don't cry. This boy will be delivered right now. Boy, how are you? You are good. They initiated you. Yes. Eh? That are carrying him go. They say they should carry him. That they will not allow him to go to, to stay for that school. And me, I want him to be there. You look at this. Hallelujah. That this water is blood. If they are playing, you'll be telling them that see this thing, see this thing. You'll be very function and mommy, listen. It's not the fault of the boy. This is this is demonic. Are you getting my point? This is why Jesus brought you here today. Keep in the house, whatever you keep in the house, he will not be there when you kept it. But if he enter, he knows where he sits and he will carry it. No matter where you keep it. Yes. You should still. What does he do with it? He, he was even at times the father kept ten thousand. Even I myself, I didn't know that there was money there. He went there, he carried the money with his friend, and they finished the money. How old is he? He's eleven. Eleven years. Eleven. He was eleven in December. Watch your child be delivered upon Mount Zion. Look at this woman. I'll be fasted 21 days. They will tell me that I, even I myself have been seeing a hand holding him. I'll be forcing myself, calling him, he should come back. He will not come back to look at me. The, the man will be holding him going. And one woman say that he cannot come out of this. But I believe that the God has served that he can do for me. That is why I'm here. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in the holy light. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in the at me he speaks english he speaks english say after me jesus jesus i love you i love you from today from today i set myself free i set myself by the power of the blood by the power of the from any covenant any covenant and any initiation any initiation from today i belong to jesus i belong to jesus satan Satan, pack your load, pack your load, and go. And go. I have no business. I have no business with you. With you. I declare. I declare that I am for Jesus. I Satan, you had him. Goodbye. Let him go now. Out. This same thing is happening to some that lady. That's all. It's a family covenant. Are you seeing it now? I see him as I'm praying for him. It's happening to her. It's a covenant. Don't cry, mommy. This is what is happening. How can I be praying for somebody here? The same thing is happening. In the realm of the spirit, there's no distance. They are tied by blood. That's it. As he was making this confession, you can see it affecting her too. These are spiritual laws. He said he will keep this one by saying, because this one was revealed. We don't have all the time. Don't worry, mommy. From today, listen. It's okay. It's okay. Please, please, please. We beg you. Eh? Look at me. I assure you, you will return next week or next miracle service with all these children testifying. Boy, look at me. 
Can you see those people again? No. Can you see them again? No. You can't see any of them again. You will never see them again. And the same way you have been set free, I set that lady free now. Leave her alone. No, no, no. I'm not talking to you people. I'm speaking to the spirit. Go! Now! How can it know that I'm talking? Am I not talking to everybody here? Madam, it's okay. I need to set you free. Huh? I'm seeing your head tied with a snake. You see snakes now? Even snakes, even devils. Hold on. Do you know me, madam? Have I ever seen you? How did I know that snake is tying you? Mm. This is your own because we need to pray for you too. Oh, that girl. What's the problem? Leave her. Ah, uh -uh, is that why you're holding her? Just leave her alone. Let's pray, please. We have to hurry up. Goodness. Don't worry, don't worry. God will heal you right now. Shout, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Are you ready? I hear the chains falling. It's all right mommy you are free you and your family salvation comes to you this night in jesus name she's okay she's free please while this is happening start passing your prayer request inside outside please quickly start passing your prayer request if you've not written it write it when we are prophesying you are free to call your loved ones and let them connect or if you have whatever point of contact no problem it's scriptural Sometimes he will pick a knife that he wants to kill his kid. See another episode here. What? He will pick a knife that he wants to kill his immediate elder brother. He will pick a knife that he wants to kill him. My brother, how are you? Well done. You love Jesus? You Wait now. He's not the one. Look at me. Look at me. We give people here, among other things, spiritual intelligence. You understand? No man can just get up. Please, while you're listening, be passing your prayer request. God answers prayers in miraculous ways here. In case you wanted to write something and you've not written it, please write it quickly. Whatever it is. So he's he, you didn't come for yourself, just for him. My brother, how are you? What's your name? Clement. Clement. You love Jesus? Yes. You will be delivered right now. All right? He carried knife to kill who? His elder brother. Why? Just like that. I was in school, they called me. They had to lock him. They released him yesterday so that they locked him in the police station for three days because he carried knife to kill his brother so they released him yesterday so that he will come for this miracle service the devil is a liar brother look at me you will be set free right now you have taken all the glory you have taken all the praise you have taken all the let him go now. Every foul devil. In the name of Jesus. Go. Every desire to
SS and we are going to change genotypes in this place today. Don't ever believe, hear me, hear me. Don't you ever let anybody tell you you must remain SS or AS for the rest of your life. I'm not negating medicine, but I'm telling you there is power to change it. If this is the only miracle you have, I know many people who cannot marry today because they said they are SS, we will change it. If God cannot do it, then he is not God. But I think God is able, isn't it? Hallelujah. I change this SS now. The next time it's tested, let it be found AA. Hepatitis, go. In the name of God. As you're guarding the request, just begin to bring it. We have to kill many birds with one stone. Please, hurry up. We really apologize for the time. You can see how much the time is constrained. We can't do much. And help me, please. Some of you can see me, please, Bishop. Let's so that we'll tidy it up. Okay, let's, let's, don't worry. Cause here the rain is falling. I hear the rain, and I'm not ashamed, not afraid, and I'm not afraid. Not Out.
submit your prayer request. It will go now. Look at me. Just look at me. Let her go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Just look at me. has an incision they did an incision for her native doctor and don't worry please we don't have all the time for the explanation whatever it is Jesus is Lord in Jesus name go let her go in the name of Jesus Christ we set free now We're going to pray on this request please stand up please bear with us but every part of this meeting is important please please and please just two more things and we're out of here you can see how the time constraint there is so much we want to do but hallelujah now listen god answers prayers in dramatic supernatural ways here hallelujah and as we pray i'd like you to stretch your hands towards the altar hallelujah and just pray in tongues lots of miracles will start happening to people and for your family members after that i will now speak into your life this is the best part of the meeting stretch your hands please stretch your hands even as we pray thank you jesus
Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. We present our request before you. The things that we desire that you do for us. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that from this night we we'll begin to celebrate these miracles in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Some of the requests look impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For we are celebrating the miracles, the successes in the name of Jesus. None will go unanswered in the name of Jesus. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, we present this request in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Please stand up everybody inside and outside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them. The Bible says believe the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. As I speak over your life, I want you to believe. Please, please, believe and return with mighty testimonies. We don't have all the time to do the things we want to do. But we want to challenge thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Listen. And the Bible says, and whatsoever Adam called them, that's what they became. Whatsoever Adam called them. The Bible says he brought the animals to him to see what he will call them. And he told Job, hast thou commanded thy morning? We're about to speak. Prophecy is very powerful, brothers and sisters. This is the moment where everyone can participate including your loved ones who are not here hallelujah every terminal disease in this place everything called terminal disease everything called terminal disease in the name that is above all names i curse you now in the name of jesus i curse you now in the name of jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost, that sickness leaves your body now. 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 Every SS and AS genotype right now, the Lord who has done it uncountable times in this place, my God. Let SS and AS change to AA now. Change to AA now. Change to AA now. Change to AA now. With medical proof. Change to AA now. Every HIV in this place. Anyone with any deadly virus. HIV cancer diabetes in the name of jesus be healed now be healed now with medical proof be healed now i command your spirit responsible go go in the name of jesus
everything that has tied your progress everything that has tied your progress in the name that is above every other name i lose you from it now i lose you from it now i lose you from those chains now now anyone here trusting god for a job both for you and your loved ones hey prateka we release miracle jobs now we release miracle jobs now i speak it into your life i command it into your destiny i command it into your family receive it now receive it now hallelujah every spirit of delay that is working in the life of anyone here things you should have accomplished something has pulled you down there are levels you would have been right now i command right now according to the anointing of the spirit upon my life let there be acceleration now acceleration now acceleration now i challenge the powers that hold you down let them go i challenge the forces i challenge the altars i challenge the act of witchcraft i release you now anyone's marital destiny hear me for you and for your loved ones anyone's marital destiny that has been tied down whether you are married or not there are people who are married it's like they are not married there are others that should marry and there are powers that have said you will not get married this night by the fire of the holy ghost i open up marital doors i open up marital doors god protected them i open up marital doors i open up marital doors thank you jesus i pray everything responsible for inexplainable academic failure you are doing your best you write exams the result comes out and you know it's not your own i prophesy right now upon your life whatever is not your own i take it out of your life whatever result that is not your own i take it out in the name of jesus i command corrections i command adjustments in the name of jesus for those who have been victimized by any lecturer you are supposed to get a they gave you e i command let there be a restoration that restoration must happen hallelujah anyone barren here low spam count fibroid whatever it is i don't care what it's called right now in the name of the lord jesus return with your miracle children return with your miracle children every barren womb be open now All the ladies here that are going to every devil called painful menstruation or irregular menstruation i don't want to know what the name is i don't care how long it has been from this night i challenge the altars responsible be free be free be free
Hallelujah. I pray for your finances in the name that is above all names. In 2014, we prophesy, let doors beyond your imagination, we open them now. Now, financial doors, financial opportunities, every yoke, every curse, every spell that brings poverty, that's why you're giving, I curse it now. I pray every dead spiritual life in this place. There are some of you, you came here as a matter of life and death. I command every dead spiritual life, let an unction come upon you. Right now as I speak, I fire it back in the name of Jesus. Prayer life, come alive now. Come alive now. Come alive now. What life? Come alive now. Let the spirit of revelation come upon you now. Come upon you now. That anointing of favor that can come upon a man's life. Many of you don't understand. I want to activate something in your life. I pray that anointing of favor that can separate a man for no reason i pray as surely as the lord god of israel lives, may that man to hit you now may it come upon your life i pray for your family members whatever the devil said they will not get this year whatever project building project house project whatever has tied your family i prophesy lord god of heaven let there be a rain of testimony rain of testimony whatever you have lost and whatever your family members have lost some of you have lost relationships some of you opportunities let there be a restoration now a restoration now hallelujah and i pray that that presence of god that goes with a man i pray for every ministry represented here every ministry that is represented here i command begin to move in strange levels of unction strange levels of wisdom strange levels of revelation I release angelic encounters. I release prophetic encounters. In the name of Jesus. Now lift your hands. I want to activate the gift of the spirit. We have a few minutes. Very, very few. But lift your hands. Hallelujah. I'm just going to prophesy. Many people will receive impartations of different kinds of gifts. There are some of you that need activation right now in the name of Jesus. Rakatatata. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it. 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 Give the prophecy. Take it. Give the healing. Take it. Inside and outside. Receive it. Healing anointing. Miracle working anointing, prophetic anointing, apostolic anointing, entrepreneurial anointing. Take it, take it, leadership mantle, take it, prophetic revelation, take it, take it. I command your eyes to be open. May you see what others don't see. Anyone marked for death, 
in this place anyone marked in the spirit realm for death in the name of the lord jesus i cast that spirit now 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 spirit of death go 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 next week with dramatic testimonies whatever you wrote here as your prayer request i prophesy according to the anointing in the name of jesus may your hand receive it may you walk in it hallelujah listen to me keep standing i'm going to make an altar call right now inside and outside there are many people that need the lord jesus christ you have seen the works of the kingdom right now i want to give you an opportunity there may be a number of you who have never made a decision for jesus especially many of you outside some of you were invited for the first time there are some of you who have given your heart to the lord but for some reason you found yourself derailing now is the time to call you back home no one condemns you but we're giving you an opportunity i'm going to count one to five no matter how far you are please don't let anybody stop you the name of the lord is a strong tower one start running now please leave your seat and come out two outside don't let anybody stop you find your way to the front no matter how far quickly 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 god bless you they are coming god bless you they are coming god bless you they are coming coin only appreciate them they are coming don't let the devil stop you don't let your friends stop you this is the beginning of a great journey young and old everyone you are invited you're most welcome god bless you hallelujah Look at me thank you very much for this bold decision god bless you as you come keep coming hallelujah even if you are still outside as god is speaking to you come don't let anybody um stop you from receiving this great blessing hallelujah thank you so much it's my pleasure to lead you to the lord jesus christ this is an experience that you will never recover from hallelujah the lord desires to use you he desires to make a mighty tool out of you and that you spend eternity with him i'd like you to lift your right hand and say this from the depths of your heart you're not reciting a poem this is a real experience you are talking to a real person say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart i confess that i cannot help myself tonight i make jesus lord of my life I repent of my sins I receive remission right now I invite Jesus to come into my heart be the Lord of my life save me cleanse me wash me Holy Spirit come and live in me do wonders through my life from today I make progress never to return to my past i'm free of every guilt i'm free of every condemnation in the name of the lord jesus christ now let me pray for you father thank you for these ones every wicked spirit that keeps them in sin i curse it now i declare that this decision they have made will be authentic make mighty men and women out of them i curse every spirit every foul devil that is responsible for keeping you in any state of life you do not want in the name of jesus i set you free and i declare that from today you are making spiritual progress in jesus name god bless you congratulations welcome to the biggest family please i like you to follow the ushers the gentlemen waving their hands to you they'll welcome you and they'll give you some instructions
God bless you in the name of Jesus. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.